We have a super edition of Reset with you. That means more Vince Lancey coming up. Stay tuned. Vince, so good to see you as always. You too as well, Daniela. All right, Vince. So from what I understand today, we're going to go a little bit more in depth and talk about a subject that you hold so close to your heart. Europe. Europe, exactly. Try and try and at least put a frame around uh, the mess that's there uh, and uh, give people a framework that they can work with. Right. You said it perfectly, Vince. Let's help put a framework around this mammoth of a problem in Europe. So tell me, what are they looking to do over there or not do there? Right. They're trying to avoid printing money. So you have an, a rebellion against austerity from the peripheral countries. You had a meeting or a summit yesterday that turned out absolutely nothing. Uh, new solutions were, pro uh, were proposed, like uh, a European bond. Uh, that's not going to happen uh, because the ECB would be on the hook for all the money, meaning Germany. Uh, no one proposed it, but I think the concept of insurance for banks was discussed. That's not going to happen. Uh, nothing is going to happen. And, and here is until something catastrophic happens. And here's why, in a simple comparison between Europe and the U.S. They have united monetary policy. They do not have united fiscal policy. Talking about uniting their fiscal policy right now is ridiculous. It will not happen. The, the analogy is this. If there, were an, if there were an earthquake in California tomorrow, my tax money could automatically go to rebuilding the roads there. If there's an earthquake in France tomorrow, Germany's going to roll its eyes. They don't, they're not compelled to put their money in France to rebuild their roads. So without unified fiscal policy, you only have monetary policy. Okay, and Vince, so if we look at the EU summit that took place this week, uh, Germany losing patience, would you sum it up that way? Greece has not complied with any of the rules imposed upon it to uh, receive funding. It's basically done nothing to satisfy the requirements. So... Uh, in a little bit of a tactical war, a lot of the uh, smaller and peripheral countries have been <clears throat> using the press as red herrings. Let's secede, let's do this, let's do that. Yesterday in the newspaper in, uh, in the UK, uh, I think it was the UK, uh, actually it was a German newspaper, I'm sorry. Uh, they basically said, that paper said, we believe from inside sources uh, that Germany's going to throw Greece out. Uh, and that they don't care. So now what you have is propaganda being floated around in the press. So Greece is losing, I mean, uh, Germany is losing patience, yes. So Vince, if Europe fails, which country outside of the European Union would you say would be most affected? There is a relationship that I don't think is being talked about enough, and that's between Europe and China. Europe is a huge trade partner with China. Uh, you know, it's not in the press, but China is just printing money. And they have an economy that people are talking about. Oh, soft landing, soft landing. If Europe goes under, I don't know, I don't know what goes under means, but if Europe has a major recession <clears throat> or depression or deflationary event, China will lose essentially a trading partner. China will have a hard landing. By hard landing, uh, I don't mean a bubble popping. I mean a water balloon bursting. Every, every country in Asia will be affected. Uh, Japan, mostly. This may be a stretch for your viewers, but China needs its trade partners to be able to buy from it. Just like 1920s Germany needed its trade partners to buy from it. So China prints money just like Germany printed money during the Weimar Republic with the hope that the U.S. and Great Britain would come out of recession and begin to buy German goods again. <clears throat> Their timing was off, and the result was a disaster in, that ended up in World War II. Now, I'm not proposing wars here, but China's going to have a hard landing if Europe, Europe collapses. They're dependent on Europe. The, the nation that is an island that is somewhat hedged against all this is the United States. So to answer your question, China's got big, big problems if Europe goes under. Okay, Vince, you've given us a lot to digest, so let's talk gold now. What does this mean for the metal? Okay, uh, independent of all this stuff we just talked about, uh, gold is no longer in a range of a range of a range. Uh, the first thing you should expect is high volatility. 
So if you're a trader of the product uh, as opposed to an investor, uh, we would recommend lightening your volumes and widening your stops because volatility is increasing. If you are a physical buyer of gold and you have money to put into it, we would be buyers of gold uh, scaled down uh, until the 15 and a quarter area. We are concerned that if the market goes below 15 and a quarter, uh, you will have a washout. Another opportunity to buy because we think the end game is printing, but we would just buy now and buy below 15 and a quarter. Uh, those, those, uh, that's that's where we are on, on gold now. In terms of in terms of direction, uh, technically, first of all, you have to stomach one hundred dollar weekly ranges. This is just, yeah, I know it's just starting to happen. Uh, the good news is, and we hope it continues, but the euro sold off yesterday and gold followed suit on the strength of the dollar, but. If you look at the two charts on a weekly basis, and I didn't provide these for you, gold rallied significantly off the lows and is up 15 to 20 dollars today, whereas the euro is unchanged to lower. Somebody down there at the bottom in the 15.25, 15.30 area is saying enough. Uh, if the euro continues to go down, gold will become a competing asset for the dollar. So, if we have a deflationary crisis. Gold will, as we said before, be the tallest pygmy. Uh, but uh, we think when this settles down, when this is over, within the next six months, you'll have a turn and gold will head towards new highs. It's ridiculous to predict price, we think, 2000 2200 because it just can't be done. And people do it just because they count in tens. But uh, we're looking for, we don't have the signal yet, but below 15 and a quarter, we're nervous down to 1400. Above 15 and a quarter, uh, we're comfortable. And we think in the next six months, we have much higher targets. All right, Vince. Well, I'm excited to hear that some more volatility may start to emerge now in the gold market. And offline, you were telling me that some sort of Batman formation was forming for the metal. Please explain. Oh, yeah, yeah. We sent you two charts. The first chart, it's pretty simple. It's a daily chart with a trend line. Uh, it's a flat line drawn at the 1525 area. That's your support. We've seen it. We actually had an order in to buy for delivery there. It didn't get filled. So it's a pretty clear cut chart. Uh, the, the, opposite, the other chart we sent you was, was sent to us by a friend. Uh, apparently this is a legitimate formation. It's called the Batman formation. It's some derivative of a head and shoulders thing. I, I would show this to your technician uh, at least for him to uh, have a laugh. But uh, that's how it was sent to us. It's a bullish formation. So is that a legitimate term, Vince, the Batman? Well, it, it's it's a new legitimate term. Tony just walked in the room. We're about to be uh, we're about to be weighed in on by that. No, it's it, it really is. It really is a um, uh, a derivative of a head and shoulders formation. Uh, but it, it's out there now. And, you know, people are just looking for names for everything. Uh, but I've seen it in more than one place. All right, Vince, we'll be looking for those bat signals. <laughs> if you see them, don't tell anyone. But uh, thank you and always a pleasure. Thanks so much, Vince, and thank you for watching. You can email me any questions at newsfeedback at kitco.com. For Kitco News, I'm Daniela Cambone.